Success. What does that really look like? Well, when you think about it, it should mean something different to you than it does to me. Now, I'm sure we have some measures of success that are similar. For instance, we want to have control of our schedule so we can take time off when we want to or spend more time with our family and pursue the things that we want when we want to. But if we compare our big goals, they're going to be different and that's okay. That's why success should mean something different to you than it does to me. So it's time for you to define your own success and achieve it by your own rules. This is your business and to be intentional about how you run it and how it supports your lifestyle, you need to ignore what social media or other people define as success. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but that's why in today's episode, I'm going to share some tips to help you identify what success means to you so that you can build a life that you're proud to live. So let's dive into episode number 37. Welcome back to the More Than Capable Mompreneur podcast. I'm Shannon Baker, a coffee-loving mompreneur that started as a virtual assistant and turned into a total systems geek. And I want to help you shift your mindset and embrace your worthiness while creating systems in your business so you can be more productive and build success on your own terms without the mom guilt. Are you loving that? Well, I hope you're ready for real conversations that will help you beat the perfectionist inside, rediscover your strengths and up-level your self-love in the mom cracks of time so you can stop letting fear hold you back because you are enough and you do enough. We are more than capable mompreneurs. So grab your cup of coffee, some sparkling water or pour a glass of your favorite wine and let's dive in. Success. What exactly does that word mean? Well, in general, it's a universal word for someone who has so-called made it in life. And I say that in air quotes. Now, I know you've heard the phrase keeping up with the Joneses. So whether you want to admit it or not, we all have those moments where our neighbor, a friend or family member does something that we want to do too, right? Like they make home improvements, they get a new car, or they just have something new that we want. So we start to rearrange things in our lives to achieve the same thing, to get that material possession. But in doing so, our life can become about material things or about capturing the perfect image of things, which is not always so pretty behind the scenes. Now, sometimes that's a great motivator to get things done that you've been putting off. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things that you become so obsessed with achieving that it's downright unhealthy. And the influence of social media has really compounded this problem. Just because someone seems to have more things on the outside, that's more money, a bigger house, whatever it is, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're happy. You don't know what's going on in their lives behind the scenes that they show you. Not to mention There's no guarantee that having these things is really going to make you happy, but it's easy to adapt the mindset of, if I just had this, then I'll be happy. But when you do this, you're creating a pattern for your brain to seek out the next best thing. And in this day and age, there is always going to be a new thing. So no matter how many material possessions you may attain, There will always be something else, a new product, a new car, a new house, whatever the case may be. So it's time for you to change your viewpoint. You need to define success on your own terms. So the question is, well, how can you do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So make sure you hit the pause button and go grab a pen and paper so that you can take some notes. Now, here is tip number one. Remember your why to define your own success. Why did you start your business? I'm sure it wasn't so you would have little to no time for your family. And I know it wasn't so you would have less time to invest in yourself. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't so you will work so much that you feel burned out, but your business would still be in the same place months or years later. So stop and think about why you started this journey as an entrepreneur. Well, here are the three reasons why I started my business. I wanted to have freedom to spend more time with my daughter as she grew up. I wanted to help working women build their business while working and raising a family. And I wanted to build a community where women can connect with each other 
and support each other with no judgment. Now, I personally am not a fan of the word hustle or the unhealthy habits that come with that word or that stigma. It just isn't a sustainable lifestyle. Now, I understand that there are short periods of time where you will have to work harder and more than usual to accomplish tasks to reach a goal, but that should be the exception and not the rule. There should always be a point where that pace comes to an end. Now, in the days that we live in, I know it's hard not to get caught up in the noise and start following the trends you see online, but this journey is hard enough without you putting down your progress because of the so-called success that other people brag about online. Don't buy into that. Write your why down somewhere that you can see it constantly and never forget that you should define your own success. If it's not having a six-figure business, that's okay. If it takes you longer than others to get things done for your business because you focus on your family, that's okay too. That's why you have to remember your why. Now here's tip two. Practice daily gratitude to define your own success. Take moments every day to notice the positive things that you have in your life. When you do this, you will be less likely to compare yourself to anyone else. You'll be able to stay focused on your own journey and make decisions that are going to support what you want out of life. Just take a moment and think about the progress that you've made just over the past six months or so. Does your business allow you the flexibility that you desired? Are you able to create priceless memories with your family as you spend more quality time with them? When you think about these fulfilling achievements every day, they're going to help you see the forest through the trees. So when you feel happy, you're more optimistic and energized, which in turn leads to action. And action is needed to achieve success. These positive emotions are going to fuel your progress even further. And the more progress you make on your goals, the happier you feel. The happier you feel, the more progress you make on your goals. It's a cycle. So if you think back on the times that you have successfully achieved your goals, what was the driving force behind your actions? Often it's a reason that is incredibly important to you and not to anyone else. So just focus on your success in creating more of it. So develop a daily gratitude habit. I do this during my morning routine. As I sip my cup of coffee, I pick one thing to be grateful for that day and I write it down in my planner. That way I can look back over my notes and see those positive thoughts, especially they're important to have on hand when you're going through a rough time. You can just look back at all those good things and they will definitely outweigh anything bad that's going on in your life at the moment. So make sure you do that. Reflect on those things every single day. Now, tip number three, you need to get specific with your goals to define your own success. Now, this is going to take some deep diving on your part so that you can decide what you really want. You've got an idea of what success looks like to you. Now you need to start visualizing that in your head. The more specific you can be, the more attached to that visualization you become. It becomes real, it's part of your life. So when things get tough, close your eyes and picture what success looks like for you and keep moving forward to make it happen. Even if you have setbacks, don't let go of your vision. Let me give you an example. So I have failed miserably at sticking to workout plans because I wasn't visualizing what I really wanted things to look like in the end. I focused on being a specific weight. Now, of course, I kept in mind, I just wanted to be healthier, but my big goal just wasn't one that helped me cultivate the right motivation. So I had to shift my visualization and focus on being more fit by creating sustainable, healthy habits, things that I do on a daily basis. So I removed the big scary goal of losing 25 pounds and instead focused on first drinking at least 64 ounces of water every day. Then when I got that consistently, I focused on going for a walk at least two days a week. Next, I added in another goal. I just kept the momentum going. 
So while I still get in my walks at least two days a week, I'm now more focused on increasing my steps every day. So right now I'm consistently getting in at least 4,000 steps seven days a week. How? It's because I'm intentional about getting up and moving throughout the day and it feels great. I love seeing the number of steps that I've taken at the end of the day and it motivates me to make sure I do the same or even better the next day. So make sure you set those little goals and celebrate them when you achieve them. Those little steps motivate you and turn into bigger action. Bigger action leads to the achievement of those big goals, which in turn leads to increased happiness. So I want you to ask yourself that question again. What does success look like to you? Let's review these tips again so that you can make sure you're defining your own success. One, remember your why. This is vital to your journey and will help you ignore whatever is going on around you and what everyone else is doing. Two, practice daily gratitude. Increased happiness drives motivation and action. Action leads to success. So reflect on the things that you have that are positive in your life every single day and let that fuel you to reach your goals on your terms. Tip three, get specific with your goals. Small steps matter. So be specific about what you want and then take small steps to make that happen and you'll be motivated to then make big things happen. This is your journey. So go at your own pace and enjoy it. Now, you know from these tips how you can define your own success. The only thing that's left for you to do is to make it happen. And I believe in you. I know you can do this. Now, if you would like to share your goals with me or just connect with me for more support, then feel free to join my free Facebook community, the More Than Capable Mompreneur Group. I'm going to drop a link to that in the show notes so you can join. It's a safe place where you can get support, assistance, and accountability, not just from me, but from the other busy women and mompreneurs that are in the group, because we all face similar challenges in our lives and in our businesses. It's a no judgment zone where we sip wine and coffee and talk about life as working women, stay at home moms, empty nesters and busy mompreneurs. So please feel free to join the sisterhood. Now, if you enjoy listening to the show today, be sure you subscribe in your favorite podcast platform. And if you love these tips, please let me know. Take a screenshot of this episode and post it in Instagram stories and tag me at the more than capable mompreneur. And remember, you are more than enough. So until next time, keep calm and streamline.